So right now what we're doing is we're using three sets plus your universal to fill in a Venn diagram. Then we're going to go and answer the questions that they give us after that. So we have a universal set is 0 all the way through 10. Make sure you're actually listing those out. Otherwise, it's really easy to forget what is left over in that universal set. A, set A is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and 8. Set B is 1, 3, 5, 6, 7, and 9. Set C is 0, 2, 3, 6, and 8. So when filling in this Venn diagram, the first place you want to start is the very center. And to do that, you're going to ask yourself, what is in A, B, and C? What's in all three of them? So looking here, in all three of them, I'm seeing a three. It's a three in all three of them. Sixes are only in two. Fives are only in two of them. Eights are only in two of them. Threes look to be the only number that's in all three of the sets. So write a three down and then go and cross it out so you don't accidentally use it again. Every time you cross them out, make sure you're also crossing them out of that universal set. So at the very end, you can easily just glance and see what's left over. Okay. Then we're going to start looking at the overlap. So we're going to look at this area. And what this area is, is it's where A and B are both. What do they have in common that is missing in C? So a and B only. So what's the same that's in A and B? There's a 1 and there's a 5. There should be no 1 or 5 in C. It should only be A and B. So you're going to write down your 1, write down your 5, and then go cross them out, making sure you cross them out of that universal set as well. Okay? A and B, not A and C. For this one, A and C, we're going to look at these two sets, set A and set C. What is the same? We've got a 2 in both and an 8 in both. So I've got 2 and I've got 8. Go cross them out of everywhere. Okay. For the last overlap, we've got B and C. So right here for B and C, it's what's in both sets at the same time. So we have just a 6, okay. make sure when you cross it out, again, don't forget that universal, it's just going to make your life easier and less likely to get this question messed up anywhere. Okay. For the last pieces we have are the actual circles before we get to the universal. So what this piece is saying is what is an A that's in nothing else? So left over an A is just a 4. There should not be a 4 in any of the other sets other than the universal. So write your 4 down, cross it off. What is only in B? It's a 7. should not be a 7 in C or A. should only be in B in your universal. And then what's left over in C? Just a 0. Again, make sure you're crossing these out. We miss any numbers? Always go back and check A, B, and C. Make sure you haven't missed a number because very often it's easy to overlook one. And we did. We overlooked nine. And that's why crossing it off helps so much because you can easily go and see it's anything not crossed off. So now looking at everything we have here, every number in A, B, and C is crossed off, which means it's included. Nothing should be written twice in your Venn diagram. So the only thing we have that's not crossed off is this number 10. So the number 10 is going to go outside in your universal because it was not an A, B, or C. So it cannot be inside of their circles. So that goes in your universal. Now we have your entire Venn diagram completed. And we can go to answering the questions over here. So we're going to start off with A intersect B. They want what terms? are in A intersect B. And a lot of people will mess this up, so I'm going to show you a way to kind of help you to visualize what's going on, where your answer is supposed to be. So I would start by drawing a picture of your Venn diagrams. You don't have to put the numbers in there. We're just going to shade it to see what area we're looking for. 
So we have set A. It's the first half of this expression. Set A is this entire circle, circle A, everywhere including the overlap inside circle A. Then you have it with set B. B is everywhere inside the other circle, and I do my lines going the opposite way so I can easily see where the overlap is. And our answer is going to be the intersection. So when you're doing an intersection, your intersection is everywhere that is double shaded. So if it's got two different direction lines inside that area, that's your answer. So that includes this top intersection and the very middle intersection. It's going to be this part right here. That's your intersection. So what is in that part with your numbers? One, five, and a three. Now when you write your answers, you've got to make sure they're in curly brackets and you need to make sure they're in the smallest to largest order. So if you put one, five, and three, that's not correct. You need to put one, three, and then five. Make sure they're in the right order. So we had two areas of our Venn diagram included in A intersect B. For this one, we've got A union B complement intersected with C. Now when you're doing a shading with a union, you're going to include everything. But we know what A union B looks like. So when we're doing our Venn diagram, A union B is everything in circle A and everything in circle B, or everything in circle B. So even the overlaps, everything in A and B is going to be included in A union B. But we want the complement. So the complements can be the exact opposite. Nothing in A and nothing in B. So that's going to include everything except A and B. So that is A union B complement. And we're going to pair that with C. C is this entire circle down here. And then we want the intersection. The intersection is going to be only what is double shaded. Again, if it were the union, you would include everything that has been shaded, whether it's double shaded or not. But we want the intersection, so that is only the double shading. It's only going to be this bottom portion of C. It's the only part that's included. So then you're going to look back at your Venn diagram with the numbers and say which, what numbers were in that bottom portion of C. Only zero. So in curly brackets, you're going to put the number. Close your curly brackets. There is more than one number, you'd have to make sure it was in the correct order, smallest to largest. Right? So, recap when doing your Venn diagram, start from the middle, work your way out, cross the numbers off as you go so you can easily see if something was missed or what's left over for the universal. When you're doing the questions that are going to follow, use your shading, draw a picture. Get a visual idea of what is going on. That way you can easily see, okay, which numbers are included in my answer. If you have any questions, please send me an email and have a great day.